in the lion's den. We have a fantastic panel, including TV host Jill Simone and a panel. And I'll start with Joe Gomez, a feisty reporter from uh, KRLD in Dallas. What the heck? This child vanishes, yeah, they Jane, don't it's report very bizarre, it? bizarre, isn't it? The fact that, uh, you know, young Erica goes missing for about two years. The parents don't feel compelled to call the police. And then they don't have an address or any contact information for the grandma. Then the biological mother takes to Facebook and says, you know what? Uh, the grandma's been dead for I don't know how long. Both of her grandparents have been dead. So what's going on here? Where is Erica? And why did her brother, her uh, non-biological uh, brother, decide to go to the cops and tell them that Erica was murdered by her, fa by her adoptive family and buried in the backyard? Something just doesn't make sense here, Jane. Why is this family lawyering up and why are they refusing to cooperate with police? That's my big question. Jay Wendell Gordon, why aren't they charged with something? That's my big question. I mean, well, the child is missing. If she's there, show her, produce her. If you cannot produce her, then I say that's got to be a charge for something. Where the heck is Nan? Five words. Where is she? If there you is left no her with Nan. Nan, of course there is. I don't think there's <laughs> Nan either. And, and that's the whole thing about it. Um, something happened to this child. They know what happened to the child, and it's up to us to find out. So, I mean, the, the police are on it now, two years behind the fact, but they're on it now, and we'll get some answers soon. I, I'm very confident of that. Well, listen, Jill Simone, and here's what just drives me crazy. This little girl was supposedly being homeschooled, and apparently in North Carolina, there's no checkups. Um, nobody stopped by, no teacher, no social worker. I mean, all this tax dollars spent for all these bureaucracies and nobody in all this time checked on this little girl once to find out that she was not around that's an outrage in itself well that is an outrage and as a mother i mean my two two little girls are very young almost three and almost one and a half but as a mother i hear this story and you read the articles and a you're disgusted i was disgusted and then b the thing that follows right after that is that my eyes welled up with tears and i got sad and i inexplicably felt some kind of a connection as a mother to this innocent little girl who has had you know not the best of upbringing so far you know right. based on what we've read nobody saw anything nobody said anything I mean if I'm in the grocery store with my girls and I see something that looks remotely suspicious as a mother you know with a child and a parent who's com you know uh, who has them, as a mother I look and I say you know, is there something that I need to pay attention to? You kind of keep an eye out in that community of, you know, parenthood, making sure these kids are okay. Well, and nobody said anything. That that's outrage. Pool? Did you see that swimming pool? It looked like it was filled with algae. Maybe they should start looking there. <laughs> Erica could be in there. You know, it just goes to show. For real. Some people, some people should not be foster parents. Some people shouldn't be parents. Some people do it because they love children. That That is become foster parents. And some people well, do it for the money. This, this whole thing is a complete mess. The and there's a lot of, it's not like just, a foster family right. my understanding is that Erica's mom was married to the brother of the adoptive father Sandy so it's all mm -hmm. it's a mess but who is this mystery grandma Irene Goodman okay Nan as they say that allegedly purportedly has Erica for two years well Erica's mother says the adoptive mother says Nan contacted her out of the blue on Facebook and new intimate details of their life. Listen to this from Dr. Phil. She knew all of Erica's information. She knew her birthday, her biological father's name, right. which we had only met him for like, well, I have like five minutes in my whole life. Uh -huh. She knew all about him, her birth mother, all of her other half brothers and sisters' names. She even knew my other kids' biological, my, uh -huh. their names. She knew the city we lived in. She knew my phone number. She knew everything about us. And she said Erica's biological mother had given her the information to contact us. Oh, well, that's uh, that's perfectly good reason then to drop a child off uh, at McDonald's and forget about her for two years. Look, uh, this mom's name is Casey. Uh, this whole thing reminds me, Kinsey Schofield, blogger of another Casey, Casey Anthony. And you remember Zanny the Nanny? Well, this is Zanny the Grandma. Mm -hmm. Nanny, Nanny the Grandma, who's not, I don't think, a real person. I don't necessarily think she's a real person. I mean, I don't think that she's necessarily a real person either. Yeah. It doesn't end well. This is another sad 
story of a child who was abused and, and, and now is missing and perhaps even dead. Uh, we've heard it before, unfortunately, and, and mm -hmm. quite frankly, we all get sick of hearing these stories, but that's where we are today. I mean, you don't but have to be any crime scene or uh, homicide detective to but figure Kinsey, this one out. But, Kinsey, I understand that you felt... Are we going to do anything different? The problem in this case is so many people saw that this girl was being abused and neglected and did nothing. <laughs> Writing exactly. on Facebook to say, oh, I saw a bruise or, oh, I saw a bump, that's mm -hmm. not enough. Right. They should have that's called 911 immediately when they saw these things with this girl and they did not. It is sickening, it's disgusting, and these people are disgusting.